Hey guys, and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons, where we have a tower of machines, and a pyrolyze oven, and finally, the compressed chest. Look at this thing. We also have the portable scanner to tell us how much pollution we are now generating. Almost 600,000. Uh, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> we also process some of our platinum, and we now have these things. SMD diodes. Those things are used to craft the circuits, and well, this is Greg Tech, we need a lot of circuits. And speaking of circuits, during the livestream we actually picked up our first EV tier workstations, which is one of the components we need to take this setup to the next step. So we're turning wheat into biochaff, sending that through the pyrolyzed oven, and we have fermented biomass here. The next step for this biomass is the distillation tower, and this is going to give us all of these different outputs, pretty much all of them we need. The problem is though, to get the distillation tower, along with the EV circuits, we need a lot of stainless steel. We did craft a few stacks on stream here, which is slowly making its way through the blast furnace. And we also have just under 500 in our drawer here. But with all the other plans and HV crafting still to do, I feel like this is not going to be enough. So we are going to put one of our miners down here in the nether on a redstone vein. This should give us a decent amount of ruby we can use, which we need for our stainless steel mix. And we are going to use one of our brand new compressed chests for the output of this thing. The storage on this thing is insane, and we can even pick it up without it losing its inventory, which is awesome. So with our miner going in the nether there, that's going to take a while. And something else that's taken a while here is our basic sifted machine. This thing has been running for pretty much two days now, and we have this amount processed. <laughs> so the solution to our problems here is the large sifter. We're going to stop and invest in this thing. So we need two HV circuits, that leaves us with four. We may have to craft another batch of these up today. In fact, we'll definitely have to craft another batch of these up today. This also requires an HV sifting machine, which is possibly a quest. It is a quest. HV loot bag? Capacitors? Eh, <laughs> I should stop opening those things. So to upgrade the HV sifter into the multi-block, we are going to need a lot of Elgin steel. And check this thing out for a dust. So Elgin steel is silicon, sulfur, Elgin steel base, and carbon. And the Elgin steel base is canthal iron invar. Canthal is chrome, aluminium, iron. Chrome we also need for the stainless steel. And invar is more iron and nickel. So we have got a lot of mixer recipes today. <laughs> and we need a total of 47 of these industrial casings, which take eight steel plates each. There isn't really much more to say other than let's get mixing. Alright, so it's been a while later, I've been mixing up some materials, and I believe we have everything for our large sifting machine here. Although, as the name implies, it is a large machine, and it's probably not going to fit here. I really want to keep it next to the rest of the things we use to process ores. So I think this is as good a time as any to do a little bit of uh, reorganisation, and I may end up knocking out a few walls here, actually. Yeah, let me see what I can do about this. Welcome to the second iteration of our ore processing area, with our brand new sifting machine right here. So this is basically the same setup we had before. We have still our two steam grinders here, input and output chest, and then input and output chest here. This steam grinder imports to the forge hammer, which imports to the simple washer, outputs to the chest, and just next to this we have our multi smelter. On the opposite side of the room here we have our HV macerator with input and output chests, and the star of the show, this large sifting machine. This thing is awesome. <laughs> So we have the input chest here for the simple washer, which is powered the exact same way with our steam turbine, input water from the side, which will wash the crushed ore into purified, send it into the chest below, and then is imported into the input bus. And if we whack this with a hammer, 8 seconds later it's going to give us, I think, 12 ores at a time? I don't know, it's hard to say. <laughs> it's a lot though. And for some reason we have to have 4 output buses on this, so it just all connects with conveyors on there, into this item pipe, and then into the buffer chest here. So yeah, this thing is running at MV, I think. We have a MV combustion generator back there. 
And yeah, we've still got a big backlog. Look at all of this stuff. <laughs> all of this has to go through this system. So we're going to leave this on for a while. We'll probably end up with a lot of pollution in this area, but that's okay. It's already heavily polluted because of the blast furnaces, which actually are still running making stainless steel. So with our ore processing system cleaned up a little bit, the next order of business is to craft some HV machines. We are still using a lot of MV and LV machines, which will stay in place. Although things like the wire mill and the bending machine, I find that we're waiting on quite a bit actually. So I think it's time for an upgrade. And some of the machines will actually need for higher tier recipes, so I think it's a good idea to invest in them now. Although as we saw earlier, we only have four HV circuits left, so I'm going to do a little bit of batch crafting here, and we'll see how many HVs we can pick up for this. Hello there, little guy. Whoa! <laughs> that guy is dangerous. Yeah, that could have caused a little bit of a mess over there. I should go and find the dark spot here. I think when I was moving some of the walls around, some of the torches got knocked out. Oh, there's one over there as well. On a more positive note though, the circuit assembling machine is working extremely well here. We have over two and a half stacks of LV circuits. These are used two at a time for the MV circuits, and then the MVs are used one to one with the HVs. I'm not sure we'll have enough wafers to turn all of these into HV circuits, but investing in these SMDs is paying dividends. I mean, look at all the circuits. It's glorious. I love it. <laughs> you know what? We were actually able to get 64 MVs. Now we just need all of these components to turn them into the HVs, and this is what we can use to craft all the machines we want to upgrade to. Along with apparently the ME controller. Oh, titanium. Okay. <laughs> we are waiting on this wire mill though. Yep, it's long overdue an upgrade. So a bit of patience out on the wire mill for this electron wire. We have 63 advanced HV circuits here we can use. Wait, 63? Or one fine electron wire short. How did that happen? <laughs> Those are almost always used in even numbers. I've no idea how we're short one. How do you work? Yeah, there we go. This is going to be our 64th HV circuit. But of course, we're not done crafting yet. We still have to make all of the machines, which is going to be a lot of HV machine hulls, and this is a lot of stainless steel. Coming back to what we talked about earlier on, so I wonder how the blast furnaces are doing. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh that is nice. That's a lot of stainless. So we are of course going to be starting here with the HV wire mill, a centrifuge. We'll also pick up the HV chemical reactor and the HV mixer. We'll craft up the bending machine. Quests are flying in today, I love it. <laughs> it did take a lot of preparation though. Alright, let's see, what other machine do we want? The quest recommends the polarizer, which allows us to make the rods magnetic. I think we need this for EV tier, so we're kind of jumping the gun a little bit here, but we may as well craft it now. There's the quest. The quests also recommend the autoclave, which we technically don't need right now, but we may as well craft again. We are of course going to need some way to power these machines, and we'll probably just keep using combustion generators. However, this is our last two pieces of electron wire. This is actually 4x for every motor. And as you can see right here, we have 8 gold to our name, which is not enough to finish what we're doing here. So we got one of our miners over here, about 300 blocks away from the base, on a manganese vein. Manganese is something else we need for stainless steel. And we're going to move this over to one of the other magnetite veins. I think maybe this one we haven't touched yet. I should start clearing these once we mine them out. But yeah, the magnetite vein is where we can find the gold. And I forgot the backpacks to move this thing. Yep. <laughs> and it's not a compressed chest. So yeah, I went and placed the miner on the nearby magnetite vein. I started processing all the manganese later, just in case we need it. We don't need a ton of space, but the way our base is set up right now, we've kind of built ourselves into a little corner. So I thought I'd knock out a few more walls today and uh, create a tiny amount of space for us to put on these new machines. I did want to keep it quite close to our existing machines for when we're crafting. It's going to make less travel time. But I also wanted it quite close to our diesel supply. And this is the location I decided to settle on. I've already started taking up some of these HV machines. I don't think it looks too terrible from the outside. Managed to tie it in quite nicely, I think. But on the inside here, we're changing up the extraction method from these machines. So instead of placing chests below each machine, we have them exporting their contents into an item pipe, and then it all feeds out into this output chest right here. I was able to find a tiny amount of gold to be able to get enough electron for these combustion generators. These will be hooked up to our fuel line, which should just be over here. This side up here goes up to the clean room. Hook all of these up and fix all the pipes to make sure all the fluid is flowing in the one direction. So now what we need for this setup, similar to the MV, I think we're going to place a battery buffer, and then we'll have some HV cable to supply the power to all the machines. 
And there's multiple different cables we could use at HV again. But the one we're going to go with is the blue alloy. This is a one loss per block, so it's not perfect. But the superconductors, I don't think we can craft yet. So actually, these are not placed in the most optimal position. And we're going to need the battery buffer, which is... Oh, this is gold wire. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, surely, surely the miner has picked up some gold by now that we can use. Aha! Over a full stack. Nice. Okay, we got the gold for the battery buffer. We have to rearrange these combustion generators. I think I'm going to place them underneath. So we're going to remove all of the fuel. I have limited the pipes underneath, so we shouldn't get any more flowing through here. Not that we need to be that conservative with fuel. I mean, look at the amount we have, but <laughs> I'd rather not waste it. We'll need our HV batteries, which are quite easy to craft, actually. It's just that they take 32 lithium each. And this is the last of our lithium, so we're only going to be able to get four of these things for now. But I did go with the 9-slot battery buffer and the 8x cable here. There's the double quest. Let's plug in the battery. And hopefully there's no explosions. <laughs> there shouldn't be. Everything here is HV. Just have to enable the fuel line again. Wow, 1.6 million EU each. Now are we filling up? Yeah, there we go. Look at that thing. We have charge in the batteries. Let's test this out. Let's make some gold wire. Oh yeah, one second per wire. <laughs> Down from, what was it, 10 seconds at LV? Oh, this is awesome. I'm happy with this. Nice. <laughs> and it should all be sent to the output chest if we enable the output on this thing. Oh, it went into the bending machine. That's not what we want. I think we just have to point all the other machines down like this. So one of the other machines I'd like to add to our HV collection is the Advanced Extruder. I believe we do actually need this later on for... Yeah, we need it for tungsten steel and HSS. The issue with this though is we need more canthal. And while we created canthal for Eglin earlier on, I think I might have said Elgin earlier, but it's Eglin for, <laughs> for the sifting machine. We can create the dust no problem. Now that we have a bit more chrome, the aluminium is still a bit of an issue, but... After we blast furnace this, of course it's going to give us the hot ingots, which up until now we have just been chemical bathing in IC2 coolant. But I think it's time for another multi-block today, and that is going to come in the form of the vacuum freezer. Which is basically just an electronic way to cool ingots, and we're definitely going to need it later on for things like nichrome. We were previously gated by the EV workstations, which we now have 16 of to work with. These frost proofs, I think, are just aluminium. Yeah, a lot of aluminium at that. We should be able to muster up enough. We have 100 here and some in our blast furnace. Oh yeah, we got a few stacks here. This should be enough for us. It's only 22 casings, right? Yeah, not too bad apart from the, the workstations. Oh, and three HV pumps. Of course it does. <laughs> and I almost threw all of this into the MV machines, but we may as well use HV now. Oh, well, it would help if we plug this in. <laughs> and this one. Now we're off. Okay, we're going to need mufflers as well for this. I forgot about those. Oh, look at how fast that is. That's so nice. Oh, we had way more than enough aluminium for these casings. But there is the vacuum freezer controller block. And the request. We also need the muffler hatch, the input buses, all the usual stuff. So with everything crafted, I think it makes sense to put this next to our blast furnaces. In the pollution zone. <laughs> this thing, I believe, does also emit pollution. So let's make sure we're not on a chunk border. And we're going to be moving the blast furnaces pretty soon, um, so this may just be a temporary location, but we'll put it here for now, I think. Two MV energy hatches on the back, one input bus, one output bus, and the maintenance hatch. And I think the rest is just the frostproof machine casings. And muffler hatch. Oh, we had extra as well. Do we have a multi-block? Incomplete structure. Again. <laughs> is this on the wrong block, maybe? There we go, we've got a freezer. A vacuum freezer. We got some maintenance to do though, as usual. And we also have to power this thing. So I crafted up energy hatches at MV, which will effectively make it HV power since we have two of them. I don't think any recipes we need right now require EV power. So we're going to build two more advanced combustion generators. Or just one. We're missing, we're missing copper cable. And I think we'll just plug these straight into the machine. And these of course will need their own diesel supply, which has already been fed to this blast furnace. Which has already been fed, fed to this blast furnace here, underneath here somewhere, so it shouldn't be too difficult to route the pipes over here. There is something so satisfying about running these cables of, of diesel. I don't know what it is really, but I like it. <laughs> oh, and we have to limit all the pipes again. This part here is not quite so fun, since it's so slow. <laughs> Okay, the generators are fueled. We now just have to actually use this thing. <laughs> you can place a little chest for the outputs. Alright, we mix up some more canthal, this time in the HV mixer. 
Actually, maybe we don't want to do too much of this. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna need too much more Canthal. I was considering upgrading the Blast Furnaces. The second Blast Furnace, which is still only Cooper Nickel Coils. But I think instead of going for the Canthal, we'll just hold off and go for Nichrome instead. 21 Canthal should be enough. It was only 4x dust, right? Yeah, it was 4 4x Canthal wire here. And that is gonna take, what, 85 seconds through the Blast Furnace? Yeah. <laughs> We've got a bit more waiting to do. Oh no, I think this is still the stainless. Yeah, I think we're still cooking stainless dust in this. Looks like it's only 45 seconds. That's that's not quite as bad. We got another visitor, guys. Look at him. <laughs> Stuck on the railing, are you? Taste my arrows. Another machine we're going to make here at HV is the assembling machine. I don't think this is strictly necessary. Maybe it is since there's a quest for it. Maybe we need it for the HV energy hatch. Yeah, it looks like we do definitely need this for the, for the energy hatch later on, which we'll need to power the first EV power machines. And we're also going to pick up the disassembler. A few of you guys recommended this in the comment section. I don't know if this one's a quest. However, we do have some spare machines here, like our basic sifting machine. And if I'm not wrong, we can actually just disassemble this and get the parts back for it. I believe the disassembler will take apart all of the machines up to its current tier. I'm curious if we got all the parts back though. Oh yeah, look at that, we do. <laughs> wow, that's powerful. I mean, it is quite the investment, but... I think it's going to be worth it considering the amount of machines here we can disassemble. I mean, not all of them will go, but things like this lathe, we can probably disassemble that. We probably don't need to use that anymore. And our assembler, I guess, can go in the middle here. Now that I'm looking at this setup, though, I'm not entirely pleased with how this is set up. I may actually end up rearranging some of these machines. I feel like it's sitting a little bit awkward in this space. We'll see. So it's been a while later. I've been doing some cleanup around the base, but we do have our hot cantling. It's coming out of the blast furnace by now. It's time to try our new freezer for the second time, actually. <laughs> I did try this and voided some ingots already. Well, one ingot. And the reason for that is our power setup on the back here. So before we had our two MV combustion generators pointed straight on the energy hatches, but somehow I don't think that was giving it enough power. So we switched to the HV1, which I'm hoping is going to be enough to cool the ingots here. Well, it's not voiding them, which is the... <laughs> It's the most important part, we have our Canthal ingots, nice. So yeah, not entirely necessary for Canthal itself, but again, we will need it in the future, so it's an investment for Nichrome and above. So that allows us to craft the Canthal wire and complete our HV extruding machine. Oh nice, it was a quest. Oh yeah, these combustion generators. Um, <laughs> wonder if we should just disassemble those. Actually, can we disassemble these? Oh, we can disassemble them, nice. Yeah, we got all the parts back, awesome. So I was playing a bit with this setup on the HV machines and uh, I came up with a solution that I think can work for now. We may have to add some input buffers for these, but I've hidden the pipes underneath using some of this silicon foil. I mean, it's not a perfect match here, but it's as close as we can get without using something like, I don't know, Nequada. <laughs> There's no chance we can get access to Nequada right now. So after crafting up those HV machines, I think that means we can tick off the next item off our list. We have many, many quests completed here, in multiple chapters actually, so let's actually go through and claim some of these rewards. More HV circuits? Sure. That's effectively free machines right there. Neodymium rods, wow. Alright, I'll take it. <laughs> choice between 16 stainless or 2 advanced circuits? I mean, is this really even a choice? Would you ever take the stainless? I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> and we got 5 HV loot bags, should we open these things? Let's do one. <laughs> Redstone torches. No way. No way the game's giving me redstone torches today. Uh-uh. Alright, let's check out how our miner is doing we placed at the start of the episode. Oh look, flown mushroom. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I think it's this way. Yeah, this must be the tunnel we dug. Oh, that's weird. It, the compressed chest makes it look like it's almost nothing, but <laughs> this is actually a lot of ruby and redstone ore, which I'm super excited about. Look how fast we're going through this tunnel. <laughs> All right, let's start to get all this processed. Hello, Nitro Creeper. Wow, he exploded fast. Yeah, start to get all this processed, starting with the Ruby Ore for Chrome. And we'll see how far away from the distillation tower we are. I don't think it's something we'll get set up today since we need a bunch of other components and materials for it. But I'm curious at least if we have enough stainless. Oh, and how is the sifting machine doing? Wow, look at that. That's like infinite, look, that's so much fertilizer for our farm. Oh yeah, this thing has done like four days work of that poor little LV sifting machine. So I've been doing a little bit of napkin math, and I, this may be wrong, but <laughs> from what I understand, we need at least seven layers to this thing. 
plus a top and a bottom. And this distillation tower is 3x3. So I think that works out to excluding all of the hatches in the controller block. I think in total we need 60 of these clean stainless. I believe you can run less and like for example you could just do this six tall but you would lose the outputs of the CO2 gas and the methane and the methane is the top slot which will always be the top slot and this is actually the primary resource we're after from this thing. So 60 of these clean steel machine casings is 480 stainless and we have 730. So actually we have way over and above the stainless. Oh yeah the muffler upgrades I forgot about those things. <laughs> oh yeah I did also clean this area up a bit. I kind of put a cap on it. But yeah, we will be running at least two or three of these things in the near future. So we definitely need as much stainless as we can get our hands on. But um, setting this up next episode may not be impossible. But anyways, I think this is going to be a good point to wrap up the episode. We actually got quite a lot done today. We got the sifting machine, we got our vacuum freezer over there. And of course, the start of our HV machinery. Which should make the future microcrafting a lot easier since we won't have to wait as long on the machines. So yeah, that is going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you all soon for some more Greg Tech New Horizons.